camera, so I just slide them back like all Hey, I guess we'll can get this meeting started. Uh, I'd like to see if we can get a motion to approve last meeting's agenda, please. Minutes. 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 Or, yeah. The agenda. Agenda. Oh. Okay. agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I make the motion to approve the agenda. <laughs> I have a second. Second. Approved. Okay, we we'll get a motion to approve last minute's regular meeting minutes, please. Get a second. So moved. Okay, do we have any uh, things to report, uh, update, Jamie? Yeah, uh, actually, Jamie and I have been working together on uh, some of the items that we discussed at the last meeting, plus uh, should be reporting on a couple of the other things that, that you guys had asked. But I guess to start off with, uh, a questionnaire. Uh, Jamie and I have worked on this. Uh, it's on this first uh, double-sided sheet. We'll be, uh, well, one thing we wanted to do is make sure that we could target youth. Uh, as far as getting survey results, because we've said this before, what we think is cool now may not apply to today's generation. So we're asking that whenever somebody does go through and do this survey, they put in the year that they were born, adults can gladly answer as well, but we can actually put that qualification in there. Uh, ask them their gender. Uh, where do they live, in Lovington, outside of Lovington, just to get some demographic information as well. Uh, what schools we attend, so we may need to find out uh, as far as where we may be weak market-wise, as far as a marketing plan, uh, or where it's actually sufficiently uh, done. In, in addition to that, some of the activities that we would like to see at the youth center, of course we have volleyball. One activity that I know I talked with uh, Mara about a couple weeks back was gym hockey indoor hockey. I played it as a kid. I love hockey to begin with, but uh, I played it as a kid, and apparently the Hopskin Center has instituted this program, and it's gone over just phenomenally. That's awesome. And it's not involving ice skates or anything. Uh, whenever I was a kid, it would actually use a gym floor, and it's plastic sticks. You don't have to have pads or anything like that. There's certain rules that you follow. But that, that's another I guess active play is the key word right there instead of sitting around. So one thing that we have discussed is the possibility of seeing if we can't borrow some equipment uh, to test it out uh, to see what kind of investment we're looking at. It's, it's pretty inexpensive to do, but it would just be another option to get kids out there. You know, Mara and I have looked at some of these synthetic surfaces, which would be really cool. Uh, it kind of simulates the puck traveling across ice better than just a traditional gym board, but you don't have to have ice skates, uh, which I don't know, maybe in the future that would be really cool. Ice skates on gym board be kind of Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, a couple, well, because of Light Up Lee County, I actually looked at one point into getting some of that synthetic surface they use for the ice skating. It's pretty expensive, but that would just be really cool. I know the city of Albuquerque. Uh, purchased quite a bit of it for their downtown square area down by the convention center yeah. that they want to put in there. Of course, basketball, the computer lab, one thing Jamie and I are working on right now, our computers that we have down there need to be updated. Uh, so we're both actively looking for grants. Uh, we know that you put children and computers together, there has to be a grant out there for that. I think that one will be a really easily uh, achievable goal for us. And the last ones were donated to us by NMJC, and they were like six years old when we got them, and we've had them over 10 years. Are we actually looking at desktop or just desktop? Yes, yes, desktops. Because we have all the um, um, equipment and everything to hook them all together so that we only need the one printer, and also two so they can be monitored. Um, they're not um, 
strictly monitor, but they are monitored for 18 and under. Because most of you know, you go to an MTV <coughs> site and the first thing that pops up is a naked woman right there. So we try to discourage that by the monitor. With, with doing like a wireless solution where a kid could come down there, that would be a next step on developing that because there's certain parental controls you can put on your networks that limit that and different filters. So it's just looking at that solution. But for right now, it's just upgrading those desktops. So that, because the, the kids come in, they use them for homework, they use them for ESL training. I mean, they're, they're widely used, but we do need to update them because the, the network infrastructure is there. I know that we're working right now as far as getting our network speeds up to par, uh, as well as our, our cable needs. Uh, some of the other things we're already pursuing, like the lounge area with the couches, uh, to see if right now we have the two futons or the couches for the gaming area. Do we need to incorporate more? Jamie actually had a moment of inspiration the other day, too, as far as additional furniture needs. Get some really good bing bag chairs down there. These kids are going to need to sit. So just making a more comfortable, friendly environment. Uh, and of course, some of these other things, creative arts classes going along, what we've discussed at the previous meetings, uh, getting some of those things. And when I mean creative arts, it's more than just painting. Like, who knows, we may have a great sculptor come down. Just different arts, even for, I don't know, dance art or something. That's an actual. It's an art. It's an art. I'm going to just shut up right now. <laughs> um, dance, tumbling, and cheer classes. Uh, a little bit on that. What we've done is we have released an RFP to find somebody willing to come down and teach. That RFP will be open on the 9th, and that's when we'll evaluate it to see what those responses are. Uh, we have uh, cooking, of course, baking classes. Uh, were you able to find out exactly what Ms. Duff Buckingham was? No. Okay. So that's uh, one thing that we still need to work with as far as the availability. Uh, we even were kind of brainstorming the other day as far as seeing if we can't get somebody who uh, either has taken the classes or see if Bobby Lobby can come over and do like a Wilton cake decorating class. Uh, they, I know they offer those at their store, see if they can do some type of outreach to children to do just another activity. Yes? Maybe we can talk to the
to maybe the top five or six and limit this to where you can only choose five of or six of these things because we do have a very tight budget. At least we would know based on the responses where we need to prioritize our needs. So this won't be an open, open field. That we're going to limit that so we, we know exactly where we need to focus our money based on the majority of votes. Uh, granted, if, if, since we do have basketball already, if that's our number one thing, uh, we'll just move down to number two and work on the numbers two through six because we do have basketball other than trying to get the, the new goals uh, out back. Uh, some of the other things is also, because it does affect scheduling, what days you would, you, would you attend the youth center, what times. Uh, also, if we are to open the center up, I know right now I have it from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., but I believe I'm going to change that to 10 a.m., uh, which when we talk about schedule, we'll see why here in a moment. And then also if busing was available, let's just see how popular that option is. I know we brought that up before. But how many students uh, would actually take advantage of that and is it worthwhile for the schools to actually make that investment? Uh, and then, uh, of course, how do you learn about events? To where we can target. I know we're really going to start, uh, just like with this survey, put the direct link on our website, but use our Twitter and Facebook feeds and word of mouth to push people to go and answer the survey. I think we're only going to wind up maybe putting that survey out for five days. Uh, the longer you have that survey out there, our, and when we've done our surveys in the past, the majority of our responses response come in the first 18 hours. And then after that, you get one or two a day. So limited to five, uh, that way we can actually start compiling the data and looking and seeing if our strategy or what we're thinking is in line with what the public has. And we haven't announced at the schools if the survey exists for the kids to, I mean, you know, yes. the schools are willing to announced during announcements and of course yes definitely uh, are there any other questions that the board may want to even entertain having on here my put on nerve is there anything you would want to teach <laughs> that's actually not a that's uh, yeah, what that's a second right survey yeah. second survey we're, we're, we're actually there any? yeah and we really need some you volunteers to do that. You know what? Yeah. yeah. That's a good question. Airbrushing, drawing, parts. Do you have a talent you would like to share with others or something like that? Something you need to teach. A talent you want to share. And what we'll do is we'll put an optional contact form um, below that question. Probably need to make did. sure that I'm the only person who has options. Yeah. 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 They would be able to get, you know, we could be promoted as community service hours for mm -hmm. college applications and that sort of thing. Honor Society and what have you. Volunteers or for they yes. share it on life often. <laughs> 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 somebody can, has a skill that they can yeah. teach rather than spend their time off and that would be all well, the, the youth council could do that too and have another hour. Yeah. So, cool. No, that's a good question. Any other questions? Um, well, one, one of the, uh, uh, another update, room is painted. Tomorrow the equipment's getting installed. So we'll have that up and running. Uh, would have installed it last week, but I was gone. Um, and I want to be the first one to use it. Um, <laughs> it's different. Yes. <laughs> I went down there. Already. Yeah, the, the colors down there. They're dark. It's awesome. I, I went in when it was half painted, and it looked really good. I mean, the color selections were better than what we initially picked out, I think. It turned out really, really good. So uh, now the schedule. Uh, one of the things, I've got this up on the board because we can actually manipulate it. Um, but it will, oh no, I'm just going to it off. <laughs> Let the projector warm up. Um, yes? I'm sorry, it's just, so at your center press release to the Hawks and the Sun, and it kind of 
when you look at our uh, meeting room, the meeting room, what I call the meeting room, uh, tutoring. tutoring room, <laughs> has the TV and it's carpet. That's where Jamie has had interest from some of our youth to teach guitar. And so we're thinking that two afternoons from three to five, or actually be three to six, more than likely, three thirty to five, whatever. Uh, we could actually put them in that room, and it would be dedicated for two uh, for guitar lessons. Uh, we could use that for some of our small scale activities. We wouldn't put any types of arts or crafts in there because there's carpet. Is that yes. that front room? Yeah. Where, where we used to meet and do glitter. The laces and G. Room, it's set up as a classroom and we want to keep it as such um, just because of the unique nature of those events we don't want to make a lot of changes to that environment there and it's awfully awfully small it's a very small room so we don't want lots of kids in there now the gym the lovely lovely gym um, of course uh, we have right now traditionally from and I just put it on in the even hour increments. Uh, for, from three to five, the three to five hour time period, we, um, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, we have youth basketball. Now, <clears throat> Tuesday and Thursday evenings has been traditionally known as men's basketball. And honestly, we have right, we have more adult male basketball players utilizing that gym. But we also have a underrepresented female demographic of adult basketball players. So we're going to change it to adult basketball. I mean, it may upset the men, but you know, it. We we have to do this. Uh, if we have females who show up and play, they can they can play with the men, or they can choose to have their own games. Not, we're all going to have to work together on this because we do have a lack of facilities. So we would still do that now. <laughs> This is something to consider, and honestly, this would have to go before the commission, too. It is a youth center. Do we want to continue hosting adult or the men's basketball? I really don't have an issue with it at this point. I'm thinking, you know, if we see where the youth are going to want in there, then we might. But there is such a lack of activities for young adults that, I, you know, I don't mind seeing some activities down right. there for them. But if our youth need, you know, if it gets to a demand from our youth, then I think we need to reconsider. Well, and we do, when we say men's adult, um, they're like 16 and over. Yeah. And we have a huge group of teenagers that just love basketball. But then again, we also have a huge group of men about 25 to 32 years old. And then we have a very tiny group of 40 and over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> 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 um, well, I I and I agree. Uh, I, I see us having running into some issues uh, with People want to come in and practice. Uh, for like little dribblers, you know, there's only so many goals, there's only so many courts. Um, but as long as this body feels comfortable with, with doing the, you know, the 16 to a certain age, uh, allowing them to use that, I, I have no issues with it. Uh, I because I look at it this way: you have that 16 year old out there on the court, they may find a valued mentor in one of those adults you play at. Right? So. It, it, it's just one of those, hopefully, unique opportunity that children can take advantage of. Uh, some of the other things that we put in there, because uh, we want to start incorporating volleyball. So on Monday evenings, volleyball from 6 to 8. And also on, uh, let's see, we would have a, adult volleyball Monday evenings. We would have youth volleyball on Friday evenings, which prior to that would be gym hockey. And then we would have youth volleyball and adult volleyball on Saturdays. So I know that <clears throat> I, I, Jim, Jimmy and I have really discussed this, uh, that setting these time slots, and if for some reason we don't have people actually coming down to do adult volleyball, we're actually going to be tracking uh, attendance 
uh, which we'll have compiled monthly that shows this is the age range that are coming down, this is what they're utilizing. So if we find that, well, they're not really using, doing youth basketball on Thursdays, for example, we can move some other type of physical activity to occupy that time slot. Do you include that with the gaming as well? Like, let's say they have having more tailored kids than they have in high school. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely, you know, we may wind up having, okay, guitar lessons are just really popular. Now we have drumming lessons. Okay. So we can move it. This would be flexible. I mean, this is a test, and, and this may actually wind up getting tabled as well, based on our survey results. So it's, and this is one thing that we had, we had talked about. If you look down on the bottom of your schedule, the very bottom, you have these numbers. Everybody online can actually see these numbers too. So. Um, the that's the operated hours. So we're looking at Monday. So you can see, so you don't feel your neck there, sir. Um, so the operated hours. It'll be open seven hours: Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, which on Tuesdays right now it's really only open for two hours. But then we would actually be open on a Saturday for ten hours. We open up at 10, close at 8. Now, in the event that we have dances, obviously we would be looking at some, some uh, overtime from staff, but we would also need adult chaperones. Yeah, we'll Tell about that. Uh, yeah, overtime breaks. <laughs> <laughs> but we think that, and we're really hoping, you know, that by cementing the fact that the youth center uh, is for youth on Saturdays and not private party rentals. We'll see more use on Saturdays. And this survey hopefully will guide those kids and we'll never be able to remove that phrase from their mouth. My children do it all the time. There's nothing to do. Uh, there is something to do. Uh, but those are uh, some of the things that Jamie and I have worked on the um, past couple of weeks. On the volleyball, are you doing it like it's free play, not, not being organized volleyball? Well, that's where we would do, Monday night would be the leagues, but um, Saturday afternoon, it would be come in and play. Just be free play. And it'd be play, it'd be, if you want to practice for the league, if you are thinking about volleyball next semester in school and want to try it, you know, that Saturday would be your day to come. But Monday would be league, league games, and they're 16 and up too, as well, all women. Or men now, too. Yeah. Co ed. Co ed. I, I think it's looking good. I, I think there will definitely be some tweaking because I, I'm not real sure I see six graders there at 7 to 8 o'clock. I, you know, I, I do. I do. You I'm do. Sorry, I do. I have a sixth grader. Mine may not be out that late. Well, that's what I'm saying. I will tell you, they will be. Yes, they they will come if they know it's available. They will come. This age of sixth graders are very different. Awesome. <laughs> they're they're awesome. so that's different. Good. And have we already, we discussed last week about, you know, the nets and stuff, we we're going to look into it through the school. So, uh, I don't really know who was visiting with that on last meeting. So, no, Mike, volleyball nets. Volleyball, volleyball, volleyball nets. Yes. No, we haven't a volleyball net. I've ordered it, was something special. Yeah. 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 See, this is made for some more. I was trying to think. something? <laughs> because we had looked into, you know, them donating us one from the scrap pile, as they call it. But, yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure it would have been in. But first, um, I'd like to explain to everyone that even though our volleyball nets are mobile, they won't leave the youth center. Yeah. There won't be for um, I'm sorry, but you know, they just won't leave the youth center. 
because then it, then it takes us several years because of the way budget falls for me to replace it. Now you wouldn't think a $180 net would matter in the budget, but when you're talking about a $500 holes, the whole system replacing it, then some years we have none. You know, yeah. you have to go without it before the next um, budget comes Doesn't in. Doesn't need to go anywhere now. No. Uh, my, so let me backtrack a little bit. Um, <laughs> after we last met, um, I ended up meeting with the team. I got a chance to tour the team center in Hobbs, and I met with um, the, the two guys that came here, which was Andrew Kupu and Brett. And he brought a couple local artists. One of them is actually here from the area, and he did some work at the library. The Teen Center Wall, that's what he did. His name's uh, Dante Rios. He's a graduate from high, from Lovington. And then the other one is Jay Garcia. He's a Hobbs. He's from he's Native Hobbs. And he does murals in different businesses. The Big Eagle with the American flag, that was his work. And his son was actually the People's Choice Award for the Lee County Commission for the Arts last year and he does more abstract art and um, so we all sat there and talked and Andrew really wants to push the mural program to be a county-wide thing he wants it to be our own county like every Tatum, Lovington, Hobbs, Jow, and Eunice all do it together cumulatively and he's reached out to Eunice and they're on board for it however Andrew felt that we were more equipped and more ready to do something like that than Eunice was so he sent me a press release, but I didn't realize, I didn't even pay attention to the date. And I like read it over and I was like, yeah, we have a meeting coming up, I'll bring it to the board, but apparently he already sent it out. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <clears throat> and he also did a flyer for us. Um, I've already talked to Leanne, our superintendent here in Lovington. The reason why we're pushing so hard for this is because Hobbs just got a $5 million grant for this mural program that they're doing. And it has to be a collaboration between the schools, the city, and a youth program. So, if, and it's actually on our school board agenda to be on next Tuesday so that we can also get behind it. It's a four-year program. Like every four years, this grant opens up. And they've been preparing for it for the last four years, and they finally were able to apply for it, and they got the $5 million. So instead of having volunteers or not being able to pay, like, Jamie for extra hours, that grant covers that. It also covers supplies, um, and it gives them a little bit more structure to the program. Huge, that's a lot of money, and it has to be administered through the school, which is why the school is so important to be involved in this, and uh, their teen centers also ran through the city, just like our youth center is. Um, and so me and Andrew started talking about what it would really take for us to get something started like that here in Lovington. And the biggest thing is, of course, somebody to actually teach the classes. Um, and Jay, Dante, and his son all three agreed to be full volunteers. They wouldn't charge us a dime to do it. The only thing they would need is a location, supplies, and the kids, of course. Um, so Andrew asked me through a 501c3, which I reached out to James, and we're not technically. So they have agreed to lend us their 501c3. He actually wrote us up a letter as well so that we can take it to businesses like Higginbotham and be like, hey, do you have any paint that was returned or anything like that that you would, wouldn't mind donating to us? Um, and that way they can actually get a tax <coughs> deductible. It's actually tax deductible for them that way. And um, what they had asked was that we do it three days a week, two hours, because um, they're doing it two days, two hours, and it's, that mirror was taking forever. And I don't know if any of y'all had a chance to look at it. It's online. It's gorgeous. Um, the kids all came together and put together ideas of like what they liked and what they wanted to be on there. And then their artists actually put it together for them and now they're putting it up on one of their walls. And they actually added glow-in-the-dark uh, glow paint so as you turn it off the lights like everything's still, you can see it, it's really cool. And um, they're getting started to actually reach out to businesses so that they can start doing these murals around town. And it'll have what's called Teenscape as the logo and that will be what will be passed on throughout the whole county. And he says that if it takes off here, then that will give them a for sure way into Eunice and the rest of the community so then we can take it off and make it huge. Um, I don't know if we can do three days a week to start off with. 
and I know uh, Dante really wanted to start off in the summer, and he's kind of a graffiti artist, um, and one of the big things that he talked about, which I really appreciated, was he wants to give them a history lesson before I actually start teaching them what graffiti art is, because there's a huge difference between vandalism and graffiti art, and he wants them to know that, you know, and, and explain that to the kids and actually talk to them and, you know, this is where it started, this is where it became, these are some of the greatest, you know, there's a lot of really cool murals like in Brazil and other places that have done graffiti art, but there's that line, you know, where, and we've seen it around town, all the vandalism and stuff like that, and what he really wants to push is for the kids to be able to express themselves without vandalizing the community and actually making it look better. Um, and then Jay does more of landscapes, so he likes, you know, doing the, the prairie and all of that stuff. And his son does abstract art, which is what we traditionally think of when we think of art. But their biggest thing was having every kid be able to express themselves, whether it's with, you know, with a paintbrush or a spray paint, spray paint, so that they can actually get into it and be involved. Um, I don't know if we can do three days a week, though. They want to do three days a week because that mural's taking really, really long and kids get antsy and they want it to be done so they start messing up on it. Um, but, uh, so it's kind of really up to you guys. They want to start it in the summer so that by the time summer's halfway in, the, the actual teaching is done and they can actually start painting. That's a lot. My question is, do we have a wall selected or? <laughs> <laughs> So much as the eaves and walls, but some of our storefronts could be a mural. Well, and that, I know, you know, this would be something that I'd have to talk again with uh, with our with the community foundation for the arts the one we have here in town, because they had talked about doing a wall. You know, our theater walls, one of them on the side, maybe doing like a really cool mural that expressed the history of the theater or something like that. Um, I don't know if that's still available. And even just <coughs> painting one of their walls as an in between while they're doing their remodels wouldn't even be a bad idea. We could reach out to them and then it's kind of whichever business that mind is having us, right? <laughs> no, I, I agree. Um, I think <clears throat> we need to find out what days. I think three days a week is doable. Mm -hmm. I honestly do. Okay. It just, it, it depends on what days are available to do it mm -hmm. what time. Dante is completely open the whole summer. He doesn't care what days. Okay. We just give him. So days. I think, I think uh, it'd be worth it maybe just drive down the office and talk to him. Or actually, yeah, it might be better to come up here and take a look at the youth center so we can kind of see maybe drive around town. I I don't know if we want to do something on the inside of the youth center or on the outside, or if there's another place um, that we would want to do it. Well, um, um, the gym would be cool. Yeah. The thing about the youth center is that we have summer programs mm -hmm. all morning, and then in comes um, some adventures, adventures, and they adventures. have it clear to 6 o'clock. Well, he wants eating beans. That was one thing that they yeah. said they don't want during the day. They want I think we can. Yeah. I think we can. I think we can come up with something. Maybe six to eight. Or, I'm just glad that they want to do three days. Yeah. Uh, my biggest concern was that we were looking at maybe one day a week, but I think we. I think this maybe is very doable. Ten years. Huh? I know. <laughs> 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 they don't want to make that color. <laughs> She's no longer, her name's Sonia. She was the one that started it with them over there in Hobbs, but she's moving, so she's not going to be able to continue it. But that was one of her biggest things was, I wish I had more time with them. And um, another thing that this grant entails is that you have to do eight hours a week for 30 weeks at a, like, 30 week increments. That's the requirement so to have, receive that. Yes, and so if we were able to start at six hours and then maybe increase it, you know, that would be huge. And I know, I don't know, but I, I love free money, so <laughs> being able to apply for something that huge, that would be really cool. And they wouldn't need much supervision, you know, it would just have to be... They oh, that, to that's, be, that's what I was just commenting yeah. with Jamie, that, that frees up us. Yeah, because they, well. they would be watching the kids. And then something else that Sonia said that was really cool was that a lot of times, it, like if she's not even there, the kids will text her and be like, do you mind if I go in there and paint for a little bit? 
and she just clears it with Britt, their instructor, and he, they, she lets them go in on an off day, just, you know, the basic stuff, like being the background or something easy like that. So, okay. And I, I have a flyer and a donation letter, and apparently the press room <laughs> that one really took me. <laughs> press release up there. Oh, God. I know. Well, the, the only reason why I told him we could put that on on the billboards was because of the location that they made. So, because I was thinking, wow, that's, uh, that might be a challenge. But, no, I think it's I think it's good. So, we'll uh, I'm supposed set to up a, a meeting with them. Uh, what's it, like a, one of the things called that you have to have to be a teacher? The lesson plan. Oh, my lesson gosh. Plan. A lesson plan by the end of the week. Um, they kind of got onto them so that, and it's not going to be like really detailed. They want to be flexible with what they teach, depending on how many kids come out or what the kids like. But I did ask that there be some structure to it, and it's not just like, hey guys, today we're going to paint this. No, like, I, I want the kids to be able to, oh, well, these are strokes, or, you know, this is a history day, or, you know, that way there's a little bit more organization between the classes. So that the kids that do come in late or anything like that don't just come into, like, chaos. So he's going to teach them just the basics of paint, of art? He's, he's going to teach them a variety. They're, they have very different styles. Um, Jay does your traditional form of art where it's like the environment and you know things like that, nature, and Dante is very artistic, so he's just all over the place. He y'all seen the library, right? The new one on that wall. He did that, yeah. and then um, his Jay's son, I can't remember his name. He does your really traditional art. So what they each want to teach them the basics in that type of art, if that makes sense. So that way, all, that was their biggest thing was that when they, Dante kept saying that when I was here in Lovington, I didn't have anywhere that I actually felt like I belonged. He's like, and having a variety of ways to teach them different arts, they can each find their own niche. It doesn't have to be, oh, you have to spray paint. No, if you feel better on a canvas, you can canvas. So we look at limiting this to a certain age group? They suggested sixth graders to high school. Okay, that's a little broader than I was even thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, sixth graders might be a little bit much for it, but. Well, um, Belinda actually is working with our sixth graders, and she yeah. says that they're kind of her best. And I don't know if it's the class <laughs> or what, but she says that they're the yeah. ones that get into it the most when it comes to art stuff. Um, and you know, that I thought that would be another cool avenue was to have maybe Belinda randomly do like a celebrity day and then you know she can go in there and teach them different stuff um, but we can always limit that I'm, I kind of want to run it up to start with just to see how many kids we get yeah and then if let's say we only have sixth grade to eighth graders go show up so then you know we can shrink it down but maybe just to start off with do it a little broad so we can actually see who, who, interest who is interested uh -huh. yeah. yeah so if a young man like me showed up I'm you can play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I could run around this table. <laughs> when are we looking at implementing this schedule? Uh, really, I don't want to implement it right now uh, until we get the results back from our survey so we can tweak it at the latest July 1st. Let's just put it that way. I had a, qu I had a question. The out of the bottom operating hours, uh, Mrs. Bailey, are you going to be there the whole entire 40 hours per week, including every Saturday? Um, well, <coughs> we'll we probably have to split the Saturdays between, because there is only three of us. Um, and I put Maria in where she is most needed. So the most bilingual um, student and stuff like that. That uh, th this isn't all the youth center does. This is just That's some that the youth center at, does. You know, July 1st, we're looking at summer program in the morning. Right? Yeah, and, and then we have that after school. So we have yeah. summer yeah. events or whatever yeah. that is in the afternoon. Yeah, are y'all there during Afternoon summer adventures. You know, we come yeah. back when they're done. Yeah. 
um, because that's what we were asked. Yeah. And so we come back when they're done and open the gym and yeah. you know let the kids in okay. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's crazy in the summer. Yeah. Is it in the budget to hire somebody else as a part time just during we, the summer? We have a seasonal help. Oh, okay. Yeah. During the summer. Yes. Yeah. I don't we remember get how many. No. Yes, we get three. We get one. Uh, <laughs> So on this on this sheet here, a uh, full time position counts as one, part time counts as half. So we have five here. So that's three full time employees. We have and three. And then four, yes, no, and then four, four. seasonal. Awesome. Yes. So, you know, you get <laughs> so we'll actually have extra help. And okay. That's awesome. Down there during the summer. And yeah, use that person. Mm -hmm. To load this extra schedules, the Saturdays and stuff. Don't well, yeah, absorb that, that's, that's during the summer. Right, that's absorb during the summer. Means, yeah. And so so if you, you said you want to start part of this in well, July 1st. I definitely wanted to have this implemented by July 1st, and a lot of that is just simply um, just making staff adjustments, uh, making sure that we get the, the data in here. If we have something just totally off the wall, how are we going to? achieve this particular project but yeah i would like to no later than july 1st because that's when our new budget year starts to have this new schedule but if it's possible to do it even sooner uh, it'd be great and it may be i would say probably beginning of june would be the earliest because i would like to just let this board look at it uh, one more time so it'd be our first meeting in june uh, to Kind so of, how are you going to work around the, the church program? Then? Work around the church. We will have. We're going. To, Jamie and I actually are going to have that discussion with after school adventures. That will just. Because I know you said before that the these programs would come before. Right. We're going to we're going to work with them to figure that that area out. I also have a question for you. Um, since it's getting ready to get started in June, July, uh, the ages sixth grade. Is that going to sixth grade or coming out of sixth grade? No. Going in. Well, so well, what your in, yes, so like summer, all so. the Yarbrough kids can come, the fifth graders can come because they're sure. going to be sixth grade. Yes. Okay. Just making sure that way when I tell people. That's a very good question. <laughs> well, yeah, because very yeah, good that's cause I'm like, okay, so what age comes? I should have <laughs> just answered it with yes. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't be a problem that's that's why I, would, I, I really would like to meet with them either this week or next week uh, so we can figure that out and we may just have to make some adjustments um, uh, th that's why I'm saying yeah I would love to start this no later than July 1st uh, just so we can work out and see how this is going to factor in uh, for these for these different activities I don't know that uh, we're gonna experience that many problems I think uh, we, we may change it and we may find out that just based on like summer programs that we have, 
We may have to have a summer schedule, and then this is our schedule for the remaining nine months out of the year. So it's uh, it's a work in progress, but I think it's a positive step in the right direction. Okay. Um, another positive thing: last year we had 80, 80 kids, and then we had a different 80 kids in July. That's I. I think it's because, for one, it's the cause, and for two, it's our programs, it's, it's the leaders. It's just 80 kids, and normally I have to, to stop them at 75, and I don't know how they got in, but <laughs> so we went over our um, room. You know, how many is supposed to be in the room and everything last year? It was. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. There's supposed to be 25 in each classroom. And then above that, I have 12 to probably 15 or 16 teenagers that come and help with the programs. So it was just, it was phenomenal last year. Just letting you know. Summer program is always awesome. I think, you're gonna, I think you're gonna have it that way again this year because of people not being able to go on vacation and stuff. Right. And because I know the second session usually smaller than the first. Yeah. So uh, when we get this implemented, I know you said you're going to use Twitter and Facebook and the, the electronic boards and stuff. But for the ones that don't see it, is there a way we can post it at the schools? Right. The list of the days and times of activities and the yeah, no, we can use our library. Uh, we could even talk to you know some of the businesses around town because school school's fixing to be out. Yeah. Uh, well, so, in the future. <laughs> right, no, in the future, yeah, I'm sure that we aren't gonna have any problems with the schools but passing out flyers. It's just I think it's I think that now nowadays with and with the way things are going, I think it's gonna be rare that somebody's not gonna have access to Mm -hmm. The internet. Somewhere. Yeah, it's it's just the way of the future. Well, and we could put a we right. could have a web link that just has this mm -hmm. on it, then have the schools oh, post right. the web link. Right. Uh, or you have that right there. Mm -hmm. page of city of right. Yeah, yes. and we'll uh, make sure that that's posted on. Our <laughs> website is currently undergoing a revision. We don't have the new. But it's it'll be different. Uh, but we're work. It's it's quite a bit of work to get it revamped. It's new for an update, and we have folks working on it to incorporate more stuff. Is there a possibility that for our next meeting we could also have like a sneak peek of the school calendar for next year to kind of see like when some of the athletic events were going to be for dances and that sort of thing? Well, the. the the school year calendar is out as far as activities and athletic events. I'd have to talk to Robert Ariel um, and put that. I know that some of those schedules are done. Football is done. I believe basketball is done. Volleyball is done. I'm not sure about cross country. Baseball, softball, probably not. Track, probably not as of yet. But, uh, we mean mostly football because traditionally we've had dances on there whenever we have a home game. Right. So, I, you know, if we could see when those were, maybe so we could might could kind of foresee, have a little crystal ball there. Uh, you can just email it to me. Jay Williams at Leventon.org. So for the most part, we're on track. We, we're on track. We're covered. Anybody else got anything? I just, I just want to say one thing. Uh, I know back in uh, January the 20th, uh, we had that meeting down at the U Center. And I think that's when you gave us the bad news about making some, some uh, budget cuts and stuff like that. And that's when you told us about cutting the $10,000 that was going towards the, uh, the youth center. And uh, I just want to thank you very much for your commitment as a city manager to support the youth center and, and giving back those $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, it's because <coughs> the commission and staff have made good decisions over the past couple of years where we've been spending money but we haven't been spending it all to save for times like this. We actually 
you know, our biggest concern was keeping our folks employed. We want to make sure that people have jobs because we still have a job to do for the citizen to meet those service commitments. And uh, just because of those smart decisions that we've made over the past couple of years, it's allowed us to be in a pretty good financial st standing right now to where we could restore that funding that we had to freeze earlier. And that was one of the things when we started looking at our capital appropriations. It's like, well, we just froze these. It doesn't mean they're off the table. We got to bring them back, but we have other needs as well. So now we were. It's. I'll make sure I pass that along to everybody. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. awesome. So on the gym yeah. project, is it gonna? Is it just the next layer? Is it gonna go all the way? Well, and that is that is part of it. It's. It's. Uh, you know, we have ten. Uh, we have ten thousand dollars allocated in next year's budget for capital projects. It's projects that will cost over five thousand. Based on this survey, we may have a need where we have to reallocate that. What if they say, well, outdoor basketball, they really want outdoor basketball, we can move that funding for that. The gym may be a lower priority. Um, so it's the money is $10,000 is in there for those capital improvements. If we choose to go ahead and proceed with the gym, the, the, the gym model, yes, it would be the next level. That was just an estimate on what it might cost. Uh, so really, it's going to be based on what the citizens are asking for. But we do have that that funding in there for projects like that. Anyone else got anything? The summer programs flyers will be out at the end of the week. Um, for those that want them tonight. You can have them tonight. <laughs> 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 I think we have pretty well covered it all. Uh, so. so we have something from the public out there. <laughs> we do. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. My name is Brittany Pettiger, high board members and city manager. So I was sitting here and I was listening to your meeting, and I'm an active um, community member with the youth in Lovington. I've been a youth minister, pastor, whatever you want to call it, for four years now. And so, first of all, I want to congratulate you on all putting so much time and effort towards our youth. That's really important to us. A few things that I wanted to point out was, um, one, how you're going to approach the survey with the children. Um, as far as Facebook, we have a lot of kids on Facebook, but I, out of my entire youth group, I don't know a single kid that is actually on your Facebook page knows about your Facebook page there's most likely the moms that you're gonna attract with the Facebook page so one thing I would like to suggest is why don't you talk to some of the churches we're trying to constantly to get kids to do some other extracurricular activities and I know a lot of churches that would like to commit time to help the youth center a lot of moms want to see these kids doing other stuff and so if you would go and maybe stop by and see one of the pastors and just say, hey, we have some events coming up. We'd like to see if you'd want to be involved. And also, can you pass out this flyer? The, the youth mural program is amazing. I have so many kids who I know who would just be super excited for that. <laughs> also, speaking of the mural and the arts program, I don't know if you've thought about it, but... If you've ever been in Hobbs and you've seen the Pettigrew Associates building, that was actually done by a local artist named Mick Cavanaugh. He's a youth pastor. Actually, he's now turned to a young adults pastor in um, Hobbs. He's at Crosswinds Lovington. And I'd be more than, huh? I was about to say, I'd be more than happy to give you his information. He did all that work and he studied and majored in art. And so he's a phenomenal artist. And also Dustin Hoffman. And he, <laughs> you know, I believe I said his last name correctly. He's actually the sculpture artist at the NMJC. He teaches, and some of his artwork is actually in the museum at the moment. 
He's amazing, and I'm pretty sure that he would love to come maybe every once in a while and just give some information about sculpting and metalwork. He's the one that did the really cool face right outside the building of the museum, if you ever get to go by and see that. And... <laughs> no, not the actor. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to say is It'd be so cool if you kept the age open from 6 to 12. When we, we make sure that we mix 6th graders in with high schoolers because they get to understand the confidence and just see how the other older kids act. And when they get to see that, it starts a mentorship and they get to create relationships and it doesn't freak them out so much when they start getting into high school events and it really boosts their confidence when they get that interaction with older kids. So it's just an idea to keep that open for sixth graders to 12th. And that's it. Well, so thank you. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Well, if there's not any other comments or anything, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I got a lot of notes on these.